Hello everyone. Um, today I'm gonna to be showing you. I'm gonna be showing you how to make this kind of effect in Cinema 4D using a plugin. Well, um, not really a plugin, more like a um a third party Espresso tool, as you can see here. It's not that complicated. And um, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to make this. So first thing, obviously, you gotta to go to my Gumroad and download the file, the reach out file, and you will get this so right off the box you'll get this and the first thing that i recommend you to do is go to your um both reach out core and reach out 1.0 here go to basic and in the icon file here you're going to search for that file so yeah the file is also available in the um downloads um page in my gumroad so just download that and put it here um it, it doesn't really make much of a difference but it's kind of it's kind of cool to have your own icon there. Anyway, so right off the box, obviously you can just, you know, do what it says, make me editable. So you do that and ta-da, you're done. But obviously you want more, you want to have more control and you also want to apply it in your own scenes. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first, so the thing you have to copy is only the core and the 1.0 here. Only these two objects. I'm just going to copy them in a new scene like this so the reach out 1.0 here this is basically the leg and the target as you can see and the reach out and the reach out core is where all targets eventually go to so you know if I have two targets then both of them follow this reach out core right okay cool so yeah, so you can just start by, you know, locking your y-axis and then just duplicating it as much as you want. And yeah, this works. You know, you can just grab your core here and you can see that it works. But obviously that that's a lot of manual work. So what I recommend to do is to just use a cloner, which, which can be a little tricky. So I'll just get a cloner. Uh, Right here I'll just get a clone editor and yeah it looks like it's working but it's actually not so the thing about cloners is that they they do instances which doesn't work for espresso for some reason so yeah all of this is just instancing one object which is the one in the middle here right so anyway um, let's make this more interesting I'll I'll make it something like that okay cool and to add some variation, um, what I like to do is to just add a random, like so, and adjust the strength here. And if you want to avoid um, stuff intersecting, you can add another vector, which is the push apart. And all you gotta do is just reduce this radius until you're happy. And yeah, I think that's good. So there it is. So we're basically right where we left off at, which is, you know, this. So yeah, you can just make the cloner editable. And there you go. It all works very nicely. But of course, you want to have some more settings, right? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to delete these vectors because I don't need them anymore. The cloner is already editable so here's how, so the thing about the settings is that they're like individual so what you want to do is select all of them like this but you know it can get pretty complicated so like you know if you select other object and then you got to go back and select this it's yeah it's quite painful so what i recommend to do is select all of them then go to um select selection filter and create selection object and what I like to do is to just move everything under the selection object. It doesn't really matter, but yeah. And I'm going to delete the um, the garbage it left. So now, if you're kind of missing the thing, you can just hit selection and restore selection. Now you'll select everything. And the second thing you can do is also to lock your, uh, what do you call this? The object editor thing. Yeah, this thing. Just click on this lock thing and now you can, you know, move stuff and you'll still have settings open. 
So I'm going to explain the settings now. Search distance basically just, you know, the search distance for the targets. So for 78 meter, yeah, centimeters, whatever. Just make it, you can make it connect to more spheres or less spheres. And well, growth multiplier basically, um, basically controls the speed of the, the speed of the growth. Yeah. So right now it's like this, right? But if I make this really high, you can see that it's going to be really fast. And yeah, you can get a lot of interesting effects here. But if I make it really low, then yeah, only some can actually reach the target like that. And some other settings, we have radius, which is, you know, just radius. And radial subdivision, I like to just keep it at 1 because, yeah, it doesn't really matter. As long as you got the um, the fong tech, then it'll just look smooth and okay. Uh, but yeah, maybe if you're crazy and you want to have more subdivisions, then yeah, go for it. And here's another quick tip that's not necessary, but it can it can give you some interesting results. So, you know, this radius is fine, right? But the radius is only, like it's like one val one value for all. I mean, which is, which is okay. But sometimes, let's say you want to have like different values, like randomized values. So what do you do? So let's just say I want values between 3 and something like 9. So 3 and 9, three, between 3 and 9 and randomly. So here's what you do. You, you change everything to 3. So yeah, they're all just skinny. And then what you want to do is type in x plus rnd and the difference between 9 and 3 is 6. So rnd 6. And now you'll basically get value between 3 and 9. So yeah, that's a pretty um, pretty cool thing. Let me repeat that again. So let's say now we want a value between um, 5 and 10. So first you set it to 5. Then you go x plus r and d. Um, the difference between 10 and 5 is just 5. So r and d 5. Boom. And yeah, that just looks, you know, more interesting depending on what kind of effect you want to achieve. And I'll also adjust the growth multiplier here to make something. And look at that. It's like a little creature, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I guess that's it for this tutorial. Oh, and also I'll be releasing soon in my Gumroad, basically a um, a more advanced version of this. And it's, it's, it's inspired by the Mimic Monster from The Edge of Tomorrow. So yeah, stay tuned for that. It's, it's, it's not going to be free, but yeah, this is basically like the free version of it. But yeah, once you know like the basics of these, you know, espresso stuff, you can pretty much just do anything you want. You know, just you, you can disp displace the splines. You can you can do whatever. This is just kind of the basis, right? So yeah, I think that's it for this quick. Well, not really quick, but yeah, that's it for this little introduction. And yeah, thanks for watching.